Okay, so... I'm not the only person that uh, practices what I would call modern-day shamanism. Um, I see a lot of, um, and I wouldn't say a lot, but I see a few people on YouTube that, um, in a sense, say they practice some type of modern-day shamanism. And if they don't even use the word shamanism, they, in a sense, do practice some form of modern-day shamanism with using science and uh, old knowledge, shamanism, mixed with their own experiences and their own way of living and their own way of being, um, they are practicing their own form of modern day shamanism. Now, I just want to kind of make this more normal because I think the problem is that we have this issue, like people get, get their panties all up in a bunch like, when I started calling myself a modern-day shaman, people were like, oh my god, you're not a shaman, yada, yada. And even now, the word shaman, humans think Native American, when it was a Siberian word, but also an Asian term, that there are, there's Asian shamanism, there's Native shamanism, and the Natives and the Asians, and I'm pretty sure they share a distant ancestor um, somewhere down the, the line of their DNA, so... It's that shamanism is a complicated thing. Now, this is also most likely why uh, Chinese have the 52 Chinese herbs, that they still practice their form of shamanism, and it just adapted into their world as the shamans uh, stopped existing in the world. Because the shamans were the doctors, the therapists, the priests, the scientists, the philosopher, all in one, right? And, you know, the healer, all in one. So the herbalist, like, it, it was all these things in one. And when the world evolved, the world didn't need a shaman because we, you know, invented... You know, the shaman became the therapist, the doctors, the psychiatrist, the, um, like, the herbalist, the... Uh, like all of these different things and and now the psychonaut so shamans now we look at shamans as if you went down to the amazon rainforest to drink ayahuasca with a shaman you're like oh he's a shaman or she's a shaman but i'm trying to kind of get this idea out here and i know it's a rough idea so like whatever but like i'm trying to get the idea out here that it's quite possible that um Shamans are gonna all die. Obviously, shamans are all gonna die. And some of their kids don't want to learn shamanism. So sometimes some of these shamans that, you know, are doing shamanism, their children don't want to do it. So then that's why you have a, you have white shamans now. You have shamans that, you know, were born and raised in the Western world that go down and drink ayahuasca with a shaman and then, you know, become the shaman's uh, apprentice and then learn from the shaman and then eventually become a shaman themselves. And then maybe that shaman gives them their retreat if that shaman died or something happens or whatever, and so forth and so on. And what I'm saying is that eventually it's going to evolve like that, right? But also eventually it's going to evolve into normal human beings like me. Somebody who um, I found psychedelics through listening to Terrence McKenna when I was like 19 years old. So from 19 to 20, I was listening to Terrence McKenna and a bunch of other videos on shamanism and psychedelics and um, just researching, listening to podcasts before I ever started diving into the psychedelic world. So before I ever did DMT, I watched, you know, probably like hundreds of videos about it a year prior, did a year of research prior. And, and I mean hard fucking research. And then I finally did DMT and realized all that research, I could do 10 years of research and it wouldn't have had shit on 10, 10 actual DMT experiences. Like, the information that I learned from 10 DMT experiences in the beginning was more information than I learned the entire year of researching DMT and listening to Terrence McKenna and listening to everybody else. So... I've had over 500 DMT experiences, and all of these experiences, you know, now it became one thing. It's no longer that, um, I can use this as an example, that imagine one DMT trip took you here, 
another DMT trip took you here, another DMT trip took you over here into this thing, another DMT trip, but eventually you start to see that it's all one giant picture, that it's all one giant thing. And that's when I started realizing. So on my journey using DMT, I had direct experience. I went in there on it alone. And this is why I have an issue. So the shamanism today, where it's like where people go down to the Amazon, they drink ayahuasca with a shaman, and you know, and it changes their life, it helps them with the trauma, it helps them get over this and that. That's all fake. So that's not really um, how original shamans used ayahuasca. Like originally, the funny thing about ayahuasca is that originally, like the shaman would drink the ayahuasca. Like if the person was sick, the person would be sitting there, the shaman would drink the ayahuasca. And then when the shaman starts, you know, tripping, he's able to diagnose the person because he's able to see the other dimensions and the energy and the other thing that is radiating from the other person's aura. And like, you can see so much more. You can also have visions when you, when you close your eyes. So maybe you can have visions of the girl or the, or the man's problems or whatever. And, um, it was that thing that these psychedelics, they allow you to see, you know, some of them allow you to see visions of the future. Um, so like, <clears throat> There would be these things that these shamans would use these things as tools to allow them to gain access into information that they needed. Um, and it's just literally getting help from the higher dimensions, from the, from the higher realms. And the first shamans learned on their own. The first shamans learned by taking the plants and learning from the plants. It's not like... Um, cause yeah, shamanism eventually became something that was passed down from generation to generation through word of mouth through, you know, the shaman would then, you know, pick somebody to basically be the shaman's apprentice. And then he would teach that person to be the next shaman of the tribe. Um, and you know, eventually that's what it became, but originally that's not what it was. Originally what it was is the first shamans were literally herbalists and people who ended up, you know, foraging herbs on their own and learning on their own and learning how to make the extracts and learning how to make this and make that and learning how to do it on their own. Um, they say that, uh, I've watched many like shamans on YouTube and documentaries and things like that. And a lot of these shamans say that the plants taught them how to make ayahuasca. This one shaman said that it was the mushroom that gave a shaman a vision of two plants and basically told them to gather and basically give them the vision of these plants. So the shaman went to find those two plants and then brewed it together and then drank it. And then that was ayahuasca. Um, now, I definitely believe that because I've had visions on... So on high doses of motherwort, which is Leonora's cardiaca, on high doses of that, there is something that I call motherwort visions, where if I shake the rain stick, um, I'll sit with, and then with a blindfold over my eyes, I'll sit there and I'll have visions. And I've had visions on motherwort and visions on these herbs. And I have learned this on my own, that there is no research on motherwort. Motherwort is used, um, was used as like a natural epidural and it helped with postpartum depression for women. That's why it's called motherwort. But it's that... I literally learned on my own. I found the plants that work for me. I found my helpers, my teachers, my things. Because it's different than um, your things. It's different than the Native Americans things. It's different than the African things. Because the African shamans, which we call voodoo, which I fucking hate that term, but African shamanism is basically voodoo, but it's not voodoo. Voodoo is, makes it sound evil, but they wanted you to be manipulated to make it make you think that you know, that they're practicing evil, witchcraft, you know, all that shit is shamanism. It is just misunderstood, so they call it voodoo, so they call it witchcraft, so they call it this or that, but really it's just misunderstood that we have this ability, we have, that the planet is alive, we have the ability to connect to the planet, we have an ability, just like we can connect to the internet, we can connect to the ethernet of the planet, of the universe, the quantum field. This shit is real. Now, quantum physicists are starting to uh, be able to tap into this, which they're now just starting to gain shamanic information. That's what I would say 
learning about the quantum field, learning about other dimensions, learning about uh, all these things, that is what I would call shamanic information. Information that humans have already known for thousands of years, but we think humans were primitive. We think they were primitive, and maybe they were primitive in a way that they didn't have like cell phones like we do now and touch screens and um, computers and all this other shit, but they had access to a technology that we genuinely don't understand. It's the same technology that is running my consciousness that's speaking this information to you. Because yes, the blood's flowing through me and there's electrical signals firing back and forth between the neurons in my brain and there's all this shit, but um, really I'm just a bag of fucking meat and bones and mush and there's something in me that is actually me, my consciousness, my whatever, that's in my head because when you think, you can hear it in your head. You can feel it. It's not like you can feel yourself in your legs or or whatever. You're in there somewhere. Or maybe you're being transmitted into there. Like the radio player is being transmitted. Because I think it's more like that. But all of this information that I've gained. I have gained this information through direct contact. And then analyzing my information uh, against other people's information on the internet and comparing and this is just the way I live my life You know, I don't watch Netflix. I don't whatever and I choose not to and like right now I choose not to because I'm choosing to be on the journey I've uh, done my own plant dietas a plant dieta is that what shamans would do some sh right, so shamans will have um, basically go on a diet with a plant where they will use that plant and only that plant for maybe a week, two weeks, six months, a year, whatever, and then basically get to know the personality of that plant by having, by being on that plant all day, every day, high doses, low doses, just being on the plant. And um, that's how I got to know motherwort. I took motherwort every day for six months straight. Um, I stopped using kratom. Uh, and now I also, now my thing is I smoke cannabis I smoke cannabis the way that shamans smoke tobacco. And I've literally built my own modern day shamanism, my own beliefs that I live and follow, my own rules that I live and follow, my own ideas that I live and follow. Um, this is why I say my ideas you know, are great for me. They might not work for you, but it, it might, but it might not because this is just what I have gone through and what I've done because, you know, I was born, I went to a Catholic school when I was younger. I was born and raised a Christian. So like, I'm, I don't want to be religious ever again. I don't ever want to like learn about the thing. I want to actually meet the thing and it can tell me about itself. And that's what I've done. And it's that thing that that's what the shamans did. The very first shamans, they just did the plants. They went on the plant dietas alone. They did this shit alone. And that's what I have been doing alone. Even though like I've had, you know, girlfriends, you know, during this time. And, you know, I have uh, my daughter on the weekends and whatever. But all of that is still part of the journey for me as well. That being a father is part of my shamanic journey. The learning how to be a father, I've been growing up as, you know, my daughter's been growing up. And like, that's the beauty of, like, I had my daughter when I was 17, and the beauty of that is that I was a child, so, like, I've gotten to grow, and she's seen me grow, and that's what, like, it's one of the main observations that she's seen is that even adults grow still, so she has it in her head that, okay, you don't stop growing when you're 18, you don't ever stop growing, you always keep learning, because that's what my dad does. You know, he's always learning and changing and getting better and becoming a better him because that's my goal. Um, it's that I, I'll never be there, but I love where I am. You know, it's this thing that I'm never complaining about where I am. I love and I'm thankful and I'm grateful for everything that I've learned and everything I've went through and like all the bad experiences. I'm generally that crazy guy that's generally happy that I went through bad uh, things that I was grew up poor that I like all these things because it was all part of my shamanic journey it's all part of the thing that made me into the man I am today and like 
it's just that thing that um I'm not scared to say I'm a modern day shaman because I actually am. And I say the word modern day because the shamans are gonna die. Shamanism as we know it, as Native American shamanism will die. It will not be here forever. We're going to have to learn how to do this without them. Like, just like you have to learn how to do it without mommy and daddy eventually. And eventually you're gonna have to learn how to do it without the Native American shamanism, without the African traditions or all this other bullshit cultural shit that people think because you're black or because you're white or because you're Native American or because you're this or that or because you're Asian or because you're whatever that any of that fucking matters. None of that is real. What's real is the actual direct experience with the thing. So if you don't have your own experiences, if you don't face your own fears, get because with this path, I've been able to, I haven't had, I didn't have much past trauma in my childhood, right? I didn't have much childhood trauma, but I was able to get rid of all my childhood trauma. I was able to get rid of all these things. I was able to, you know, love myself. I was able to face myself so I could love myself. And I was able to, um, like all of these things that I've been able to do, get over my anxiety, get over my depression. I no longer believe in, in those things, you know, like it's because I believe that the human consciousness is just untamed. And once you tame your consciousness, once you tame your ego, once you tame yourself, you gain more control over yourself and you gain more control over your reality. Once you gain control over the way you think, you know, no longer think negative thoughts, no longer think negative about yourself, no longer put people down in your head, like no longer think negative about other people, uh, learn how to mind your business, learn how to like, and like all this shit that I've learned with myself. And it's like, I can't give any of that to anybody else because that takes the work. It takes the hard fucking work to be able to become your best version. And I don't know, like it, it's just this thing, the way I love, you know, I learned it from my mom because my mom loved me with such immense fucking love, like the best fucking mother when it comes to loving a human, like swear to God which then instilled so much self-love in me that I love myself so fucking much that people mistake it for narcissism or ego. Uh, that like, and none of that matters and they mistake it for ego because I don't give a fuck what people think about me at all. And it's that, that I don't give a fuck if people think I'm a shaman or not because I know my actual connection with the psychedelics. I know, you'll never know. You'll never know how deep the connection goes that I have with these things. You know, like I can explain to you the techniques that I've learned, you know, my abilities to uh, when I smoke DMT, you know, if you repeat, I love you, I love you, I love you in your head, you can literally create kind of this love bubble energy while you're traveling in the spirit world because there are, you know, negative entities in the spirit world. There are dark entities just like there are light entities. But if you become a radiating, powerful light being, um, they won't fuck with you. And that's what I said I'm proud of myself that I generally become this powerful shaman that, um, I don't know, because I travel dimensions, like, because you look at the definition of shaman, um, like, that's what I do. I go back in, in between both worlds, traveling dimensions, um, and I'm able to smoke DMT and, and like, I'm like, the rip sucks. The rip of leaving the body into that other world sucks, no matter what psychedelic you're on. But I've been able to get used to it and learn how to enjoy it and learn how to just deal with it. And it's, um, uh, I understand why shamans have sweat lodges like that. Um, there's an old Native American tradition where they would have these sweat lodges and that in the sweat lodge, it would get so hot and so uncomfortable that they'd have to sing songs, you know, just to be able to get through it and deal with it. And what, what are those, what are the sweat lodges for? It's to teach them how to deal with the uncomfortableness of the psychedelic experience, how to deal with the uncomfortableness of that. And I've been able to learn how to deal with the uncomfortableness of the psychedelic experience by growing up fucking poor, by actually growing up like and by looking in the fridge, at, you know, at times having no food and no money. 
having holes in my shoes but not being able to buy new ones having like that sh being homeless i've been homeless on the street before like that shit prepared me for the psychedelic experience that shit prepared me for the grit like the, the reality it was reality reality prepared me for reality um and that's why i'm so grateful for the life that i've lived i'm grateful that i was homeless i'm grateful that i grew up poor i'm grateful because it built my character into the man I am. It built me. It helped me. I guess it didn't build me, but it helped me. Because I built me. I made me. I made the ideas by analyzing all the ideas that I could analyze. And then coming up with a mixture of my own ideas and, you know, what I've come up, you know, what I've read and what I've seen. Um, cause sometimes other, you know, obviously these scientists, you know, the idea of the quantum field, you know, that's an idea that in a sense they discovered and like, I vibe with that idea because then it connects with the Akashic records that the Akashic records most likely is the, is the quantum field. And it's also the same thing that us psychonauts that are connecting to when you get a download of information from the psychedelic world, where did the download come from? It came from the quantum field, the Akashic records, the psychedelic world, the other dimensions, the same thing. Um, and I learned all this from direct experience. I've had thousands of psychedelic experiences from microdose to, mo to normal dose to moderate dose to medium dose to high dose to extremely high doses. Many times of all of them. And of the only psychedelic I have not done that's tr traditional psychedelic is mescaline. But... You know, 500 experiences with DMT, um, like 500 experiences with LSD, like um, 50 to 100 experiences with um, psychedelic mushrooms, uh, like 100 experiences of Hawaiian baby woodrow seeds and high doses of Hawaiian baby woodrow seeds. Um, and then like 40 different plants and herbs from like you know, Mother War to Blue Vervain to Blue Lotus to Red Lotus to White Lotus to Space Lotus to Kratom to Cannabis to, um, you know, to all these other things. Um, and, you know, like so many others from the adaptogens like China Stemma, Ashwagandha. Uh, you know, I've done Canna and, you know, Clip Daga, Wild Daga, like just so many herbs. I can just go on for days. And... I've went on plant diets with almost all of them, and I've learned from all of them. And I'm right now. I'm starting to get more herbs. Um, you know, I go down by the river and I pick the motherwort that's down by the river, and I've learned how to make extract, and I've learned how to literally extract the molecules. And I've done research on all the different molecules in all these different herbs and plants that I've done, and like the different receptors that they attach to, and. That's why I call myself a modern day shaman, because the shamans have no idea what receptors that these molecules attach to. The shamans have no idea what molecule is in these plants most of the time. They just know that they work. So I think that we need to start mixing the information and stop being scared. Stop giving a fuck what people think about you. Like, stop caring what people think about you. Like, because that's why you don't know. Like, that's why you don't, like... You're not a shaman because you think you have to learn from the dude down in the fucking jungle. But really, you have to learn from the plants. That's what shamanism is. Actually having direct contact with these plants and actually practicing the practices. Actually doing the things. You know, living the life. Um, so, yeah. I think that as this new shamanism is starting to hit the world that the world will now have access to be able to like you could be you can learn how to be a shaman from your living room have your own psychedelic experiences you know often and don't be scared to do it often like people are so scared of these things like they're gonna fuck you up and yes um if you have a lot of trauma the psychedelics have are more likely to fuck you up in a negative way mentally like you can, you know, like psychosis, like that shit is real. But I actually know, like I know who I am. So I know I was meant to live this life because I can trip so fucking often 
but still be normal because I also understand that I use plants and herbs to balance my psychedelic journey. That the the, the psychedelics ascend me. They, they teach me knowledge from other dimensions while the herbs ground me and they keep my mind grounded. While I, you know, I use lion's mane mushroom every day. Um, like there are some herbs that I use every day. I smoke cannabis every day. Um, it's just, there are things I do that help me in my life and that just help me balance everything. And it's all about finding the balance for yourself and finding the herbs that work for you. Because the herbs that I use in my life daily, you know, might not work for you because maybe your personality might be different. You might need different things. But I generally believe that everyone needs to gain relationships with plants instead of just doing them. Don't just smoke weed. Understand that you can actually gain a relationship with the cannabis plant. Don't just drink green tea. Understand you can actually gain a relationship with the, you know, with the tea plant by learning about tea. Learn about it. Learn what molecules are in it. Learn uh, why it does what it does. Why is it helpful? Why is it healthy? Why does it make you feel the way it makes you feel? Why, you know, um, learn about these things. And then, you know, um, learning about these things will really help you learn about yourself because you can learn a lot like about a person by them telling you what plants and herbs or drugs they use in their life. So like, yeah, this is my uh, idea here that I think shamanism is needs to evolve and I don't care if I get looked at in a negative way. I don't care what people think about me. All I know is I generally live this life. So I'm generally just trying to express it because I found out that it's bullshit that people lie, that it's not about the shaman. Like shamanism tries to say that, you know, they're not like other religions, but it's bullshit because, you know, the pre it's, you know, with Christians, it's the priest that has direct contact with God, that you need to go through the priest to, as the middleman. It's the shaman that you need to go through the pre as the sh priest. And it's like, no, fuck all that. They don't know what they're talking about. The shamans have no clue what they're talking about. Religions have no clue what they're talking about. Scientists have no clue what they're talking about. Um, because yes, they do. They all have a piece to the puzzle. But if you can look at everybody, you can actually start to put together the actual fucking picture that the puzzle actually is.